Please be advised this game discusses mature themes like murder and sex. Hi, it's Miranda, and I'm going to play this game without a lot of explanation because I already know things and I don't want to give anything away um, except the writer is the same writer who did that game Isle and who did Silent Hill Shattered Memories that's Sam Barlow I'm a guest in a logic database cornerstone and my search term is murder see a reflection of a face okay see the little eclipse that have the word murder in them you think it's murder I mean, clearly it's murder What can I do to help? Okay, so June 27th, 1994. Um, I don't know if I need to add that to the session, but I'm going to put it there for now. Yeah, that's me. A few days later. But, February, that was months ago. What's that got to do with Simon's murder? Simon. I didn't murder Simon. A couple days after that, Mark. You've Simon. got it wrong. You've got the wrong person. She said she didn't do it. Same day. I'd like to speak to a lawyer now. Please. You have no murder weapon. You have nothing. And all these stories we've been telling each other. Just that. Stories. Stories, okay. So, Simon. Shall I capitalize? I don't think it matters, but I'll do all caps just like the murder word was. Um, actually, before I continue let's let's look around because that's what I would normally do anyway and we have video subtitles anti-glare filter if anyone would rather see it like this but this is this is the point we're gonna keep this here if anyone does not care for that I'm sorry but that that's just how this works that's how it works okay um so aside from this the rubbish bin. <gasps> hack info. Game hack. This is some some cool cracks with class. Yeah. Um, there's a game called Mirror Game. I don't remember how to play this. Um, I have no clue what I'm doing right now. I can't put my brain around it right this moment. Somebody out there is like, oh, I know this. I don't. Here's a read me. Introduction to the logic database. Computer technology is the backbone of modern police work. The logic database is one of the many continuing efforts to disguise our workflow and preserve evidence in a manner which will allow you to work more efficiently. So obviously, there's a police station, you know. In the coming years, the computer will continue to be most valuable in your continue to be most valuable item in your crime fighting toolkit. This database contains footage transferred from the existing homicide and serious crime tape archive at Portsmouth. It has been automatically sorted using our ASR technology. Each statement made by the interview participants is stored separately. I can't speak today. It's a good thing they can. Stored separately so that they can be tagged for submission to court. The audio has been digitally stenographed and the content of the testimony is attached to each clip. In other words, that's how you search for everything because all the words are in there. 
To retrieve a clip, type in the word robbery, blah, blah, blah. You can also type multiple words, robbery supermarket, if you are working from a printed transcript. You could be even more precise, like, yes, I was there type of thing. To store a clip for later reference, click add to session. If you want to wish to add additional tags, yeah, you can, so you can add a tag to something if you want to find it later. Okay, so there's all that information. What's this? Oh, there you go. It's a little history. Um, oh, really read me. Hey, here's the database. I filed a freedom of information form to get you guest access. Everything seems to work. They transferred the videos off the original tapes in 1999, so we're past. We're just on an old computer here. And then the Y2K thing hit, so it's after 2000. And they got mothballed. No one has touched them since. I couldn't find the server with the detective's footage on. Possibly those tapes got damaged when the old archives were flooded in 97. It's the year I graduated high school. But figured this would be enough. Take your time. Okay. SB. Sam Barlow. Okay. Let's search for Simon. 61 entries, but I can only have five. All right. These all look like they're from the same day. She must have talked a lot about Simon. Let's see what day this is. Ooh, this is days before they said even anything about murder. Hmm. Simon. Simon Smith. He works at Ernst Brothers Glass. They do windows, all kinds of glass. Okay. Simon does the more special work. Mirror making, feature windows, artistic things. Really beautiful things. Okay. So that's, we just know something about Simon now. Um, Simon is six foot, darkish blonde hair, average build. He's clean shaven. If his beard grows, it goes ginger, so he shaves it. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with ginger hair. She's being light and upbeat. Uh, and, photo, and this was before the word murder, so. Photo. Oh, so he was missing. This was taken last year on holiday on loan. It's the best one I have. And they went on holiday in Rome. I'm assuming that that is her husband. It's the Rockington Arms. The Rock. Did she say it already? It's oh. one by a nice couple, Peter and Susan. There's some other regulars there that someone likes to drink with. I'm just trying not to give anything away. they having sometimes. Helen. Peter said Simon had been in and had a few drinks. Okay, so he supposedly stopped by the bar. Yes, there's an Amstrad one. No one uses it for very much. There's a printer so you can write letters on it. Simon sometimes plays games. You know, can you tell? Save the princess. That kind of thing. What a computer? Simon isn't the type to run off or do anything crazy. Someone must have done something to him, or there must have been some kind of accident. So what do we do next? Mm, should I add any of these? Well, there you go. Okay, so this is a few days after this. It's all that matters, really. The baby. Oh. <laughs> Simon's dead. But the baby, that's how he will live on. Our baby. So she's pregnant. Covering with a tattoo. You're reaching here, and I don't know why. No, I've never cheated on anyone. This must be when they started suspecting her in front of her. From anyone. Like when they switched it. Simon is dead. 
but I have my baby to care for. Why are you trying to make me sad? Why are you so obsessed with sex and affairs? You cheated on your wife. Is this your thing? She's trying to flip it on them. She's not. She doesn't like what they're doing. Got it. It was supposed to be a secret. Just because Simon is dead doesn't mean I have to give up all his secrets. It doesn't have anything to do with what happened to Simon. What secret was that? No one murdered my husband because he cheated his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. Oxford. Just in case, we'll add that to the session. And this is okay. Like I said before, it was three. That's when she was asking for a lawyer. I walked in, saw Simon. He was on the floor of the living room. So she did see him then? His throat had been cut. But you reported him missing? Or there's a lot of blood. I wonder the timeline is there. Yeah, he's dead. Maybe maybe we'll add that one to the session just because of that flicker. Um, Oxford. Oxford. This we saw already, so these are the same day. There was a conference, something to do with double glazing, in Oxford. Okay, so he went to a conference. Also, I have to look up the fact that she said pregnant. Are you sure? What would he be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. Was he cheating? You know what? She already said the word cheating. Let's see. Cheating. Uh, cheat. Let's see. Mum and Dad never knew what was going on. We got so good at it. We were so in sync that we'd use each other to cheat. If one of us had a hangover, the other one would go to school. Whoever was best at a subject would sit the exam. There were lots of differences between us. Some things one is better than the other at. What, what was that? What, what was that? Did you catch that? You see her arm here? Well, well. Six twenty-five. What day? What is day? What day was this one? Seven one. Did she just get it? Guess that's a possibility, isn't it? But um, after what she just said, I don't think that's what's happening. I got pregnant. Both our parents had a big powwow. Also, we weren't even in the room. And they decided we should get married. Okay. Yes, I'm fine. Wait, but you got a tattoo? No, I'm sick again. This happened some days. I'm pregnant. It's morning sickness. Okay, that's when she tells them. Well then, is that music? I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna take this one. Can I take this off of the session? Trying to 
remove it from the session, but you know, that's fine. Um, well, yes. You found out on my birthday. Oh. I told him I was pregnant. Oh, did Simon know? Probably is the question. It's Rapunzel. The story starts when she's born. Mother Gothel, a witch, takes Rapunzel from her parents and keeps her locked up in this tower. Rapunzel gets pregnant by the prince, and Mother Gothel is furious, so she cuts off her hair and throws it. Actually, her hair's already short here, so that's already happened. But she throws her into the wilderness, and Rapunzel is reunited with the prince, who's blind, but she kills him with her tears, and so it's a happy ending. Is that too much? I don't know if I needed that, but you know. I mean, I, I like a good story, but maybe now is not the time for me. When I arrived in Glasgow, I was exhausted. The streets were empty. I was driving badly, and I hit a taxi. Not a big crash, just paintwork. The guy was so pissed off because I didn't have a driving license on me. Oof. But when I told him I was pregnant, he made sure I got to the hospital so they could check me out. It was fine. The hospital must have details when I was looked at. There's a scratch on the car. Glasgow. If you hear background noises, I live in a house with people. I have a family. I got in the car and I drove. I just kept driving north. Just kept going. Just wanted to get as far away as I could. When I finally stopped, I was all the way up in Glasgow. I was so tired. I just had to sleep. She's saying she went to Glasgow and she slept. Is this her alibi? Yes. Um, I got to Glasgow. I was exhausted, so I pulled over and slept in the car. I woke up because a rubbish truck went past. I got some petrol, bought a coffee and a pastry, tried calling someone from the payphone, and then headed back. Okay. Yeah, that's Simon's watch. It was a gift from Eric. He got it this year. It was a wedding anniversary gift. Steel. It would have been Diane who chose it. She has really nice taste. That time, you must eliminate me. I was in Glasgow then. Oh, this is when she because of the watch. Well, it might have, the watch might have been a setup though. Because if anyone has watched enough true crime, and even whether it's true or fake, watches with broken time mean nothing. No, I don't think so. Glasgow was deserted that early in the morning. No one saw her. Got it. Bruise. I'll look up bruise. There you go. And that's the same day as this one. So 625. Bruise. Oh yeah, no, it's nothing. I was going through the top cupboard in my kitchen and the chair slipped and I kind of hit the door with my face. Sure. <laughs> I mean, hurt like hell. <laughs> So this is a couple days later. The bruise. I have a really fast metabolism, so stuff like that just comes and goes. 
I don't know if there's much more that I can tell you, but I haven't already told the other policemen. I found the body. Oh, uh, so she did call the police. Okay, so she's saying in two days that bruise like that just disappeared off her face, though. But we already know something else is going on. So, okay. And this is the last day, so let's see, right? Yeah, 7 3. If one of us got hurt, the other one would have to be hurt too. Mm hmm. A grazed knee, a bruise. Twins, got it. When I lost my tooth first, we had to pull our hands to match. Once, I slept with a boy who was seeing another girl. Hannah. The girlfriend came up to Hannah the next day and punched her in the face, gave her a huge black eye. That night, she had to do the same to me. And she almost went too far. I couldn't see out of that eye for days. She is. She snuck the frozen piece up for me from the kitchen. Mm. So much of our bodies were synchronized anyway. We started our period on the same day. We went on childhood diseases, stomach bugs, nits. I just realized if one of us was sick, the other one would go to school, something like that, whatever she said. And her parents... Hmm. Differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Hmm. She is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took him in turns, though. I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. So they pretended to be one person. This was nine, about nine. I went round and she was waiting for me. She was furious and so angry. The kind of anger you can only have towards yourself. We screamed at each other, argued, cried, we fought. I hit her back left a bruise. Oh. I had my wig on from performing. She tore it off. That explains. Wig. Eventually, we grew tired of fighting and I left. Seven, two. Mm -hmm. Twins? <laughs> really? Are you really asking me that question? Yes, we really are. Really, we're really asking you that question. Well, not us. Are you out of your mind? Twins? Well, now we know. So, like, we know you're full of crap, but let's just... Florence took me home with her. Florence? Mother hadn't been expecting twins and had a healthy baby. I guess she was just happy for Florence to clean up. Take away the evidence that this was anything but a happy occasion. Hmm. 
there were always princes and princesses. They were the special people, more important than the other characters in their stories. We knew we were like that. Twins, magical. We were the princesses. We had a poster of Princess Diana from the newspaper up in our attic. Had a pride of place. And underneath we used to put all our special things. When her engagement was announced, we were obsessed with everything she did. And later, when her life went so bad, we felt for her. Her divorce last year just kind of drew a line under things. Florence. Because Florence took one of you away. What? Oh, that last day. Across the road, where my parents first lived there, was a midwife called Florence. When Hannah was born, I was born at the same time. The midwife was there to help. I'd been throttled by the cord, probably wrapped around my neck by Hannah. The midwife told my mother I was dead. But I wasn't. She wrote all this stuff in a diary. Amazing what people will admit to on paper. So oh, she was dead and taken across the street. Florence raised me in her home. I never left it. She kept me out of sight. It wasn't odd for people to see a midwife with a baby, carrying in supplies, washing nappies, that sort of thing. I never knew any different. I grew up looking out of my window and seeing her across the road. I thought it was like a reflection in the mirror. She was me. Okay. Florence was a warm, kind person. But? But she was broken, I guess. Yeah, it was a little... When I found her diary, I also found a biscuit tin with other stuff in it. All the papers, letters, that kind of thing. Her story was in there. I never really spoke to her about it. I was far too young to really understand. I guess I just put it together later, once I was older. She had loved children. Plan to have a large family, but her husband died in the war. And that was back when you married for life. She never felt like she could marry again. Isn't that strange? She was a widow from her twenties. But I mean, I guess it was different then. You know, you married for life, and she felt she could never marry again. I guess it was harder, a war widow. One of the dead. I'm, I don't know, maybe there was more to it than that. I don't really know. So Florence stole a baby. No, it was just me and her. Eve was the name they were going to call their first child. Eve. They talked about it and were going to try when it came back. Florence's family had a history of firstborn girls, so they were convinced it was going to be a girl. It's hard to know if this is all true. These are stories I remember that I read when I was a child. Maybe I misread, maybe I misunderstood. 
sometimes it's hard to remember what happened last week. And then there's what she said earlier, the just stories. We so, so what happened to Simon? We still have to find out what happened to Simon. So now we know. Let's type in Hannah first. It's how it's spelled, right? Yeah. Huh. There we go. My name is Hannah. H A N N A H. It's Pandre. It reads the same backwards as forwards. It doesn't work if you mirror it though, it's not quite symmetrical, but well, you get the idea. Sorry. Hannah Smith, I live at 31 Gladstone Street. Okay, so right now I'm not sure if that is Hannah or Eve, because that's a thing. That's Hannah. I believe Eve is the one with the tattoo. Thirty. She mentioned Eve. She's gonna add that to the session. This little tapping thing, huh? What was that? Seven three. Got it. Yes. My name is Hannah Smith. Oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah. In other words, no, it's not. I forgot I could do that. Uh, as a matter of fact, tapping. Uh, here we go. Mm, she recognized me from the window. She told me to come inside and she hid me. They had made the attic into a place where Hannah could play. It was a dollhouse. She hid me up there. No one else ever went into the attic. It was her place. So she just hid in the attic. Okay. All right. Okay, these are all this is what she was talking about her, okay. So what are you doing talking about Eve? Well, my friend Eve. I mean she was a friend from when I was a kid. And she was always more popular with the boys, and I used to hate her for it. I mean, really hate her sometimes. once and I held Eve's head underwater. Wait, her cheek looks There was no one else around. It was at the far end of the beach. And it's like in between. I held her head under and I kept it under. And for a moment I just wanted to kill her and watch her drown. Oh, that's a thing you should say in front of the police when you're... But that was it. Husband. It was just a moment. We made up afterwards. It was a love-hate relationship. You lost yourself for a moment. Okay. 
Okay. What this? Police station. Yeah. When I was young, we ran away on my birthday. Bob Dylan was playing in London and we thought we could break into his tour bus and have him take us with him. The taxi driver we paid to drop us off. I mean, we'd saved money, pinched a bit here and there to pay for the fare. He was suspicious because we were so young, so he told the police. So they came and picked us up and took me back to Portsmouth. My mum picked me up from the station. But I blamed everything on my friend Eve. My parents let me off. You just blamed her, huh? Hmm. Killed Simon. Ooh. Here's one. Okay. What did your wife do? She didn't plead. Oh, did you cheat on your wife? That's right after. You think I killed Simon because he was having an affair? Well, I didn't kill him. I wasn't even there. I was in Glasgow worrying about whether my baby was still growing inside me. I mean, why would I kill Simon? I loved him. I believe her voice, but her body language didn't fit. But I believe this is... I believe this is Eve. I think it's Eve. I'll just put a little question mark there. So now, a fair. Just one. All right. An affair. Simon wasn't having an affair. Oh. Glass, like glass maker. Yeah, because he makes glass. Okay. No. He doesn't have any tattoos. Oh, it's another one. He has a scar down here near his stomach, past his hip. He cut himself with some glass. That was before, a long time ago. He looks just like the photo. He's not got his glasses on here, though. He takes them off with the camera. But he needs them to see properly, you know, when he has to read a newspaper or a menu in a restaurant. Not book so much, or watching TV. He likes TV. Hmm. It wasn't a present so much. It was one of those arguments that had been simmering for a while. The present was a mirror, a nice mirror. He'd engraved the glass, the kind of mirror a princess would have in a story. Mirror. He made it specially for me. He made it especially for you. Huh? Look, on his clothes, that would make sense. He made it by hand. I mean, he brushes the silver onto the glass. That's not how they make mirrors these days. He made the mirror, and he gave it to me. He made the mirror, he gave it to me. And now tattoo? No. I've had enough coffee for today, thanks. Glass of water. Ghosted mirror. Different. I can't remember. I put it somewhere safe. Upstairs, I think. That's a watch. I do that too. I haven't looked at it since. Okay. Well, that's when they show her, like, here it is. This 
We found it. Silver leaf? No. And he normally solves them properly. This mirror, it's supposed to look antique. The reflection isn't as good. It's the perfect mirror for someone who doesn't like to look at their own reflection. Um. Okay, so we're gonna do the watch. He was wearing um, a shirt. Thanks. With a blue turtleneck shirt and jeans. He has a watch. It's a really nice one. That was a gift from his boss, Eric. Mm, he had his coat, a long grey duffel coat, black pants and bear. Uh, he would have taken that with him. It's not in the house. Okay, yeah, coat, glasses, all that. There's some background sounds that sound very realistic because it sounds like somebody's ankle cracking or just noises. I guess you could call it that, but we were both, both happy to get married. It was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> we had our first dance to come back and stay. I'm not sure if that's a good wedding song, but I loved it. I chose it. And it was genuinely our first dance. We'd never danced together before. It was probably awful to watch, but I enjoyed it. It felt like it was just me and Simon for that moment. Just the two of us. Okay. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. We cleaned up. We bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes, they're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us so we could then disprove it rather than have it linger. Better to keep the body in the house than risk being seen with it. The watch, that was my touch to make sure the alibi stuck. Hi. So, wait, okay. guitar here. It was after dinner. I had spoken to Simon's parents on the phone. I looked up for an early night and I suddenly had this thought. I think it was something his mother said. She'd been speaking about old stuff. Sad stuff. About when we lived there. About the baby. There's some boxes in the cellar, nursery stuff, stuff we never needed, and I never had the heart to throw out. She's... Mm. And I suddenly remembered that when I'd looked down there the week before, those boxes, that pile, was in the wrong place. I went cold all over. I went down there with a the torch and went straight to the back. And that's when I saw the bin bags. Pulled them open. Saw the body. That's when she discovered him. I screamed and that's when I called the police. Okay. The 
this. His body. I did not kneel. His throat. It looked like his throat had been cut. Putting it together. He doesn't always wear them, but she said he does always wear them. But okay, what's this? Really? The, just the, the tone is interesting for what's going on. Can you imagine? I tried. I tried to get pregnant too, but it didn't happen. I slept with so many boys, men. My body refused. I think my period stopped because hers had. I was pretty though. I mean, how could we stay the same now? I felt like Hannah had really fucked things up. Set us down separate paths. We have become different. Do that before I forget. My tattoo, <laughs> I got it to express my individuality. When was that? It's an apple and a snake. When did you get it? Let us know. Okay. Apple and a snake, Eve. Mm, they didn't know though. So I moved out. Got a small bed set. I got my tattoo to mark the occasion. I was singing in the bar in the evenings, so I had some money, enough money to cover my rent. And I've been doing something similar ever since. I haven't put down any roots. I don't exist.
he saw me singing one of my shows, pure chance. I'm not sure I remember what he was even doing there. Afterwards, I had a drink at the bar and he came over and we got talking. I knew who he was. Obviously, I knew who he was, but he didn't know who I was. He was fascinated by the likeness. Mm. He guessed my name from my tattoo. <laughs> Told me it was a palindrome, like that would impress me. Both names are. I enjoyed talking to him. It was amazing was impressed. to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. He didn't tell me he was married. I'm not sure what he was thinking. He later told me it was like he was dreaming. A waking dream. We spent the wedding night in a hotel in Brighton. It would have been too much to do more. We were staying for the baby. It was wonderful to be in a hotel, away from home, just alone together. Since then, we've always tried to get away for our holiday. Since then. Simon dropped out of school, went full-time at the Glaziers. That was Eric's generosity. We moved in with his mum and dad. They had a spare room for us and the baby, if it came. It was a nice change. Time to myself, living there for oh, those months. Oh, they didn't need full of hope. the stuff. And Do you see what happened here? I lost the baby. There you go. I had a miscarriage at eight months. Jeez. We carried on living at Simon's parents until but it was only a few months after. A few months after and then well. Yes. It was a shock to him. I mean we never thought it was possible. I don't know what he I mean, I hadn't decided whether to keep the baby. I wasn't really ready to talk to him about it. Together, we'd send secret messages by tapping out a code that we'd learn from a book, the knock code, something prisoners of war would use. We'd tap them out on radiator pipes or the attic floor. See what we can get here. No, he doesn't keep a diary. That's my thing. I've kept one, well, as long as I can remember since I was a girl. It helps make sense of my day. And when you're forced to put something into words, it just gives you perspective. Everyone's on the same page. 
Are they? Hmm. Um, when I was eight, mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day and I left. Walked out and across the street. life. We would swap places and take it in turns to do things and we were very careful. Whoever had been out that day would come back and write a detailed diary so that we were on the same page. We had a list of rules that said what we could and couldn't do in any given situation. It was exhaustive. Jeez. We lived a second life through those rules. Rules for things that could only ever happen inside our imaginations. And we would consider all the permutations of future events and agree rules to walk our way through them. But then again. Is that she'd waited for him to come back. She put on my wig, some of my clothes, pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said he wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present, another mirror just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that unique present. She went crazy, smashed the mirror. They argued, screamed. He hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. She'd only meant to scare him off. I mean, it's um. oh, God, I don't know. I mean, I guess the rock, you've spoken to everyone there. Someone must have seen where he went. I don't know. So many things could have gone wrong. No, it's okay. The other detective has just gone to get me off. Okay, that's different. Yeah. When they gone to bed feeling me up, thinking it was flu or something. The neighbour called me, I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. Oh, the parents? In for days, no one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage. In the worst year of my life. And I'd been so happy to get married and after that it was just like, fuck. Oh, jeez. My sister is gone. And she's never coming back. Hmm? Then my parents died. 
almost the worst year of my life. A miscarriage and then my parents. Yeah. I, mean, I was infertile. Thought I was. They told me I was infertile after the miscarriage because of complications. She was, but he wasn't. Said, corrected its course, and we're aligned again. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the Glaciers now. Eric had given him a full time position after he left school. And then Stay Saturday. I slept for a few hours in the car. And when I woke up, I came straight back. Uh, Simon wasn't returning my calls and I wanted to try and make up. I got back to the house and Simon wasn't there. And I. Oh, excuse me. Is there a thing? She went barfy barks. That's why she tied her hair up. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous. Didn't want to share. Even the first date. We went to see Tom Cruise at the old podium. We both went. Kept changing places in the toilet. We only had one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. The next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me, but that was it. We didn't want another card on our hands and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn and she slept with him. Broke the rules, deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep. I mean, that's when she got pregnant, from that one time. Okay. It's like I told you before, I drove. I took the car and drove. I don't have my own car, but I have a spare set of keys. I just drove north. I wanted to think for some space between me and them. Everything I told you before is true. I stopped at Glasgow. I was tired, exhausted. I pulled out and I hit a car. My car was okay, but I was worried about the baby, so I went to A&E to get the okay. Everything was fine. Slept in the car. When I woke, I tried to call Hannah from a payphone. She wasn't answering. And then I decided to drive back. I had decided that she was more important to me than Simon. Okay. Okay. There's a wig involved here. There we go. A wig? So. You mean. But what type of wig? 
I know, but I'm not gonna say what it is. What you mean? The I mean, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I'm just gonna say what it was. person doesn't exist. I don't know what the blonde wig is, but it could be anything. Have you looked at the cat flap? A cat flap? Like a doggy door? No. The parents decided there would be a wedding. And after the wedding, Hannah moved in with his parents. There was no way I could follow. So we were separated again. I stayed in the attic. It was hard. It was like I suddenly didn't exist. I would sneak out, but in case anyone recognised me, I started wearing a wig. Attic. Hannah and I would meet up in the park. I was trying to get pregnant. But I couldn't. I mean, I couldn't do it with anyone we knew, so it was sex with strangers. Drug guys I'd met in clubs, in parks, in highways. Who's in game here? I was 17. It felt like I was being punished. But it was Hannah who had betrayed us. I had to stop when one of the guys gave me an STD. When we met up, it was disturbing. For the first time, my reflection, she didn't look like me. She was fatter, flushed. If anything, I was getting skinnier. I have a hearty look sometimes. We talked about what to do. Was it time to become our own people? And that seemed like the right thing to do, but neither of us wanted it. We agreed that her and Simon would get their own place as soon as possible, and then I could move <coughs> on. And that was the plan. Okay, attic. Hmm. Yes. I inherited it from my parents, so it made sense to move back, me and Simon. Felt like going back to old ways, before the pregnancy. It reminded me of being a girl, a dollhouse in the attic, old things. We didn't sleep in my parents' bedroom for a long time. I wouldn't have We decorated all. it as soon as we moved in, but it was another year before we started sleeping there. I feel like I would have moved bedroom around if they had passed and I don't know that's just me I think it would have bothered me yes I read a lot as a child and if you can watch lots of TV then the dolls house we had we still have in the attic it's kind of a fairy castle we used to play up there and make up our own stories yeah apparently we made up a lot of stories could the hairs have come from somewhere else? Hairs. Um, could they... We have a lot of dolls in the attic. There's uh -huh. a Rapunzel doll with long blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Could they have come from there? That's where the wig hair. Got it. Blonde hair. Got it. We could do that too. I'm not sure where the dollhouse came from. I don't know if it was given to them or they inherited it. I mean, they wouldn't have had the money to buy it. It was so huge. <laughs> it must have been taken up to the attic in parts and then reassembled up there. It is a beautiful thing. All the paper to scale, little furniture, the lights work, mirrors, beds, big duvets and pillows. We spent hours and hours playing in it. We invented all these characters and families who lived there. We wrote paperwork from them all, passports, diaries, and gave them all really elaborate stories. Once, 
a moth got trapped in there, we'd left a light on. It was making the most horrendous noise. We tried to kill it, but it was tough. We ended up crushing it under a copy of the Arabian Nights. Okay. You're not creepy at all. Okay, there's only one we haven't seen. The legal stuff was completed very quickly. Handed me back in with Simon. Eric gave Simon the week off to help with the move. He decorated, modernized wallpaper curtains. Hannah insists the attic be left as it was. Dollhouse and all. Simon never went up there. Friday evening, we had an argument, he left. On Saturday, he didn't come back. I waited all day. He was supposed to go help Eric out with something on the Saturday afternoon, but had a job, he didn't show. So Eric was ringing on the phone. I checked at the Rock, that's our local. They said they'd seen him on the Friday night, but not since. He still wasn't back this morning. He doesn't like him at all. Still not back by dinner time. It's getting dark again. So I decided to come see you. His parents haven't heard anything either. Okay. Fought. Fight. Child. Yeah, we were 17. It was a nice wedding, people said. Simon looked very handsome in the photos. His parents paid for everything, but he's an only child, so it was important to them. It was what they called a shotgun wedding, but if you looked at the photos, you couldn't tell. The dress was beautiful. It looked like Princess Diana's. <laughs> the chain wasn't quite as long though. There's a great photo of the bridesmaid helping to carry it out of the car. <laughs> It was an awful year in the end. We were living at Doug and Eleanor's. I lost the baby at the end of spring and my parents died in the summer. It was a hot summer, a heat wave. So when they discovered the bodies, it was just awful. Because of the circumstances, them dying together like that, they brought in a lot of police, a forensic entomologist. I had to look that up. It was because of the heat. It was just awful. Got it. He was dead. Oh boy. I was living in the attic. It was a very hard time. I was depressed was still pretty sick of the STD. When I came down one morning, they were dead. They were in bed and both had been sick. They'd thrown up a lot. And I slept through it. The police said it was mushrooms they ate. Dad was a mushroom expert. I mean, he used to take us picking with him and he taught us how to recognize them. And there's no way you would have picked that caps. But 
police believed that's what happened. They never even looked in the attic. Again. Uh -huh. uh, the whole thing was wrong. The bags, I, I think they were from our kitchen. You could probably check. Go into the cellar. It's just a place we put things we don't need. My dad used to grow mushrooms there. The, the bags were taped up. I think it was parcel taped up. I think it was ours. They said it was food poisoning. There was something in the food they ate. My dad liked to pick mushrooms, grow them too. They said it was the mushrooms. Ew. It was hard to believe. Death caps. They have a skirt around the cap. My dad taught me that. But, I mean, the police had no reason to think it was suspicious. They lived alone. And no one had any reason to hurt them. At the time they said it was poison, food poisoning. I mean, I felt so guilty. If I'd still been at home, maybe I could have done something. I don't know. So special. I got a job to contribute, you know. Doug knew someone and I got a job as a dinner lady at the primary school. They said it didn't matter if I could cook or not, just don't poison the kids. So you see, it's always been complicated between me and Simon. It's never just been the two of us, there's always been pressure. Okay, um, she's being chased. Um, they're trying to catch her because she did something bad. I guess she broke the rules. Photographs. Or maybe they think she did something bad. Maybe it wasn't her fault. She looks scared, not guilty. Maybe it was mistaken identity. Did they catch her though? I don't know. Okay. It lasted about six months. I tried to carry on, but everything was different. Hannah insisted I not pretend to be her around Simon, let alone sleep with him. We didn't share him like the others. The rules had changed. Me living in the attic had become weird in a way it hadn't been before. Um, okay. What about like rock? She mentioned something. There's only one. No, no one has been in the last few weeks. We had a plumber come in three, four weeks ago. Someone signed with you from the rock. Right. Not much there. Okay. Remember the song we heard earlier? 
She said, here's the rest. So there you go. You want me to play something? I'm not the world's greatest guitar player. Here's the beginning of that okay. song. Something is tuning. Tuning, I like that. How about a traditional ballad? I like different accents. That's right, I do blonde hair. In a world two sisters came walking by the sea. Oh, the wind and the earth. The eldest one pushed the other one in. Oh, the dreadful wind. Herself a little bit, even though it's morbid. And then it gets really weird, so I think that's a good place to It start. gets weird. Because if you remember, she starts singing about how they make like musical instruments and stuff out of her. So maybe she's saying like she was reborn. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, that's probably Has anyone hmm See I've seen this game a few times, but I didn't really think about that until now. I was always like, why did they put the song in here? And I'm like, I guess just to show that they did they just had a rivalry or something. But now I'm like looking into it, I'm just like, I guess that, that song means a little bit more than I thought, um, which makes sense because like I said, Sam Barlow, uh, I can appreciate that. One. We only have one more. Uh, it's around the time they ask. No. Early. I think he spoke to Helen. She said he was upset about her argument. But oh, it was Helen Blonde. She said. He likes him. He likes blondes. We already did watch, right? This is an entire day later, it's a little rough. Coffee. <gasps> coffee. She she has coffee at some point. Black coffee, thanks. No sugar. Sweet enough as it is. She's a sass. I'm gonna write. Uh, write sass. And I would put Eve. Can't tell because of the sleeves. This is super early. Um. This is clearly Eve. Years back, it was a present to myself. Eight years, so clearly. I shouldn't even be drinking coffee with the baby. It's been hard trying to give it up. 
bile sevgiden bakma. Okay. She got that tattoo eight years ago, so obviously that would have been like, oh, then you're not the same person because what? Here's the okay. Ooh, okay. coffee, I guess. Milk and sugar. No sugar. I'm sweet enough as it is. Oops. just it's funny because she is trying to have a very different demeanor I wonder if one is more fidgety because if you look the other one she's like coffee because of the baby and then that one she's just like coffee with sugar it's just a very different demeanor you can not really see my hands I don't know if I should have even done that all right Reflection. Okay. Yes. The first time we saw each other, it was strange. We both realised at the same moment, I think. We must have seen each other before, but there was this instant when we first realised it wasn't a reflection. The reflection was staring back. I think I was five. It was my birthday. My reflection was wearing a party hat and waving. I knew what party hats were from books. She hadn't worn any. And it suddenly occurred to me, today must be my birthday. I waved back and we just spent ages waving at each other and copying each other's movements. It's interesting how they just didn't tell the parents. They're just, you know, we just, we just keep this a secret. Mother wanted me to grow my hair long, but I kept cutting it myself. I wanted to look like my reflection. She always had short hair when she was little. Mother would hide the scissors, but I would find a way. Cut it with a bread knife, something like that. My reflection would always leave her house and go on adventures, but I never could. Mother taught me at home, and I had books and TV. Oh, TV was magical, but it was only on when it wanted to be, so I spent a lot of time reading books. I wanted to see my reflection. I thought that if I touched her, something would happen. We would become one, one girl. The fairy tale was over, the witch was dead, and I'd be restored to my rightful place. Okay. The witch was dead. She really did see it like. Oh. Give me give me a second. Give me a second. <gasps> Hi. Oh. I can only write now. Okay. 
I just want to see what I found here, but apparently there's something else. Sorry, sorry. The picture, the way it's drawn, just reminded me of the books we used to read as children. I read those fairy tales over and over, and they were so real to me. Rapunzel was my favourite. My brain is just full of it. Let's talk about Rapunzel. Oh, and you're using colour. So this is Eve, because then she decided that Florence was her mother Gothel, right? That's that's how I'm putting this. That's what it seems like to me. And the glaciers. I worked there some weekends and someone had a part-time job there too. That was Eric's generosity. He was always good at helping out other people's children. Simon was quiet, more thoughtful than the other boys. Even then, he had a sense of craftsmanship. It wasn't always rushing stuff. Boys that age are just running around like headless chickens most of the time. Yeah. Plus, he had that look. He looked like a fairy tale prince from one of my books. She was a smitten kitten because she needed a rescue. Simon never cheated on me. He was devoted to me and I was devoted to him. Nothing in life is easy. We were good to each other. Life isn't a fairy tale. So far, I think I've only been seeing Eve, and this is Eve. Let me see something with Hannah real quick. Just curiosity. I got pregnant. Both our parents had a big powwow. We weren't even in the room, and they decided we should get married. So I think she did a good job, like my opinion. I don't know that anyone cares about my opinion. But it seems like she's purposely trying to be more fidgety as Eve, which I can appreciate. Well, she wasn't my real mother, but she raised me. Do you want to take a story? It's a real life fairy tale. She looked like she wanted it that way. It seems to me. Eve is very much a, I know something you don't know, I'm a little flirty. I think it's so interesting because I've kind of been trapped for a while. And Hannah's just like, no, I didn't do anything. Let me answer your questions. Everything's fine. No, it's regular stuff. Just a little different, you know? I appreciate it. Fairy tales. Stories about lost princesses, evil witches, magical mirrors, and lost children. So you see, even before I knew the truth, I'd found it in those stories. Life imitating art. Got it. Okay. I guess I'll uh, buzz. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. Good. So you think you understand why your mother did what she did? I'm glad, Sarah. I'll be waiting outside. Log off and we can meet over the road. What? I'm Sarah.
Sarah, Eve's daughter. I would have been a good mother. I was young, but I would have been a good mother. She was a girl, by the way, the baby. We were going to call her Sarah. Simon wanted to call her Ava after his nana, but I didn't want her to have a symmetrical name. There was a thing with that. So that was her story. Um, I hope I did a good job of leading through the story without spoiling anything or anything like that. I was trying my best to not spoil anything that wasn't obvious by the time I got to it. Um, because I, like I said, I've, I, I knew a lot of this. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I, I remember a lot. I went through it a little differently than I expected to because me and order is sometimes just like that. It just goes to show you, by the way, how much can be done with one person. in a room, in, in a couple of rooms, I guess. But it, this is one actress, by the way. I've looked it up. And also the, the knock code, that thing that she did. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that at the end of this too, because if you're just wondering like, wait, what does that entail? I'll show you because I, I, I had to look it up when I first found out. So obviously I'm going to show that too. I'm really glad I finally got to play this stuff because I when I appreciate a game and I know that I can play through it without getting frustrated I would like to share it on here I'm sorry about that little that little steam artifact in the corner but thanks to this wonderful family thank you for listening Sarah if you're stuck you could always try admin random Okay, um, so I'm going to put the not code stuff here, and that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, I appreciate this. So. Bye. That's Anna. I believe Eve is going with the tattoo. When we work together, we'd send secret messages by tapping out a code that we'd learn from a book, the knock code, something prisoners of war would use. We'd tap them out on radiator pipes or the attic floor.